Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today I'm not only here with the Nita Strauss Hurricane Kit, I'm here with Nita Strauss the Hurricane herself, and we are here to discuss this fine box in front of us. So without further ado, explain, young lady, explain. Yeah, so this is basically the guitar player's emergency survival kit. And we created it to look like your typical emergency kit, you know, where you would normally find your, your Band-Aids and antiseptics and this kind of stuff. But you open it up and you have all the essentials that your guitar player needs yes, you for do. any emergency on stage. So first of all, it is easy to find in the dark. Because it's red. It's yep. red, it glows in the dark. Oh, so that's added kind bonus, of cool. I didn't know that. Added bonus. Get it just for the glow in the dark, <laughs> dark, folks. So if you're, you know, you break a string, something goes wrong on stage, you need a screwdriver or an Allen key or a flashlight or something, it's easy to find. So you open it on up and everything is gonna stay in place all the time. It's either magnetized or it's got this little strap holding it in place, which I love. So I guess starting from this side, please. Uh, we've got a polishing cloth, which I'm actually going to use right now because we've been carrying this guitar around that's being used for a giveaway here at Sweetwater, and it's been fingerprinty for like hours. Um, it's got a spot to keep a spare set of strings just here. Very smart. Which we always need because you, again, everything in this kit is stuff in my own life that I've needed and couldn't find right. at some point. You know, it's stuffed in the bottom of a gig bag or whatever. And it's black and it's dark. And it's yeah. black and it's dark and it's in the seam of the pocket of the gig bag. Of course, of <laughs> you know, the, where the Allen keys yeah. always are, you know, with the picks and the extra socks. Yeah. Um, and then so you move on here, you've got a little pocket, you know, store more strings, extra stuff. Up here you have your little spot for batteries, nine volts. Smart again, I'm always looking for batteries. Always looking for batteries and string action gauge. Ooh. So most of the tools in here are something that you'd use all the time. This is something you'd use every once in a while. Right, but it's there. But it's important. If you just need a ruler, you have a ruler right. on the other side. And then the last little bit over here is one of my favorite features of the kit, which we'll touch on a little bit later. But this right here is a magnet. And so all these little screws or bits and bobs that you find when you're changing strings or taking off the back plate that inevitably roll off the table or if you have a crazy cat like mine, just yep. <laughs> bats everything you're using off the table, um, you pop them right here and it's magnetized and you never lose it again. Yeah, I have to say, of all the things in this kit, I love the color. I didn't realize it glowed in the dark, which is mm -hmm. an added bonus. But the fact there's a place for everything, I think is really important because I'm always losing. I have tuners everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from when I need the darn things. Yeah. So, you know, carry them around. They're never around when I need them. But this thing here, the reason my guitars, none of them have back plates, is because I'm forever, <laughs> I'm forever losing these darn things. As Nita says, you put them on a flight case because you don't have, there's, there's never a workbench unless you work for, unless you play for Alice Cooper, I guess, there's a guy with a workbench. Mine is generally a flight case when I'm right. doing my own work. But it you really put is. it on, it rolls off, and then the floor's dark or there's a carpet there and mm -hmm. you can't find the darn thing, so you lose it. But now I just do this. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Simple things that matter. So now I can, yep. if I get one of these that it has a logo that glows in the dark, I, can, <laughs> I now know where my screws are, even if it's pitch black, so I can put the back plates back on my guitar. So thanks for that. But exactly. I'm going to repeat this. The fact there's a place for everything to me is key because that's where everything goes wrong with me. Always. It, th like, it throws it, and I can't remember which gig bag it's in, if it's in this case. Yeah, if it's in a backpack, if you took it yeah. somewhere, every single time. So as long as you put the stuff back, it's key to you putting this stuff back. If you just, if three three months later you go back and your, your hurricane kit's empty. <laughs> oh look, I see, the, I see the glow in the <laughs> dark logo. Oh darn it, I emptied it and didn't put it back. So as long as you put it back, you're set here because you've got every, you know, carry on, tell us yeah. what else we've got here. So uh, in case you don't have tuners falling out of your pockets like Bocot, you have a tuner. <laughs> You do have a tuner here. Um, again, your guitar player's best friend. Never leave home without it. No matter how incredible of a player you are, you're not gonna sound incredible if you're out of tune. Just for God's sake, you guys, take it off the guitar neck when you're done using it. Thank you, thank you. Just take it off. It's got a spot. It's not, doesn't live on the neck during the show. Just take it off when you're done. With it. Put it back in here. Uh, we've got fretboard conditioner. Again, not something you use every single day, but something that's good to have, I feel. Yep. Talk about losing things. When I was changing strings before I got one of these, 
I could never ever, and I'm literally never once could I find the Allen key and the string cutter at the same time. Or no, no not the, the Allen the key, winder. the string winder and the string cutter. Yeah. Allen keys I have laying around, falling yeah. out of my pockets. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but Until the string I winder, <clears throat> exactly. Uh, yeah. The string winder and the string cutter, I could always find one and not the other. So I end up twisting the string back yeah. and forth and trying to break it, yeah. you know, at the end. So this is my favorite little invention of Daddario's. I had nothing to do with inventing this. This is you know something that I insisted we include in the kit because I'm just such a happy consumer of right. this product. So you've got your string cutter here, and you've got the string winder on the other side there. You've got both in one That's handy thing. Simple but genius. And as an acoustic player, if you are an acoustic player, which I'm not, you do have the peg tool there as well. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know that. I didn't until I looked at the packaging and saw it. Again, I don't really have any occasion to use it, um, but it's a handy thing for somebody not me. <laughs> and uh, this isn't just for me anymore. This is for everybody to use. So I'm glad cool. it's I'm glad it's there. And this is this is just such a handy thing. I get them as gifts on tour actually all the time because I've just everybody knows I love this tool. So it's a good little handy thing. So I've got tuners, yeah. you've got hundreds of those. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I lose them. Because okay. <laughs> they didn't have a spot until now. <laughs> so carry on. So what's next? So um, this is a fun little piece. Um, one thing that I have always needed, I always had in my own little kit that I put together at home long before this was a flashlight. Yeah. And I don't like the big, hefty flashlights. Um, I like to have just a small, unobtrusive light. So if I need to get back behind a rack and do some work, it's not like this blinding light and everyone knows, oh, something's going on back there. Right. You know? So uh, the one that I used in my kit was the little round light that you clip to things. Yeah, which is, that's really yeah. cool too. And they're not, you know, they're good. You know, I would just clip it on the side of a rack or a cable and I would do what I need to do. And then that wasn't really, you know, it's not really easy to put for a place. So we came up with this little pen light and imagine my surprise when I became what I think is the first guitar player to have a signature flashlight. <laughs> well, this <laughs> like, is edu education with Nina Strauss, folks. Exactly. So, uh, there's nothing custom about it. I didn't choose the, the logo. Does the logo glow in the dark? <laughs> the though? logo does not glow in I don't think. If it did, it'd be pretty amazing. It'd probably yeah. also be expensive. <laughs> um, but it's important to have a good little light, you right. know, to, to see what you're doing. So uh, over here, obviously this is not strapped in. But when I turn it over, your screws stay and the accelerate stays because this is also magnetized. Um, so this is string cleaner and string lubricant. And um, if you remember the, the you know, kind of the original being uh, fast fret or fingers, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff, I always found that to be a little slippery for me. Um, but I do like clean strings and I don't like changing, changing strings all that often. Right. <laughs> so um, Accelerate is what I use all the time for that. Uh, it's great, it's fast, it's a little roller. You just clean the strings off and it leaves them nice and shiny clean, but not so so slick no. that yeah. your fingers just fly off of right. them, which is what would happen with some other brands that I've used. So that just lives there, which I love, just drops back into its spot. And then finally, the most important tool, the one you're really going to re reach for in the dark every time, which is the multi-tool. So you've got your Allen keys, flathead, Phillips, just basically every tool. And this is a specifically designed for guitar players. One. Right. So it's not just, you know, a Swiss Army knife. Right. No, it's it's guitar it's guitar friend guitarist friendly, I guess you'd call it. Exactly. So it's a Dario brand, guitarist friendly. It's got the right size Allen keys, it's got the right size, you know, screwdrivers for these type of screws. And um, you know, there's no, nothing more annoying than just grabbing a standard Allen key set and going like, you know? yeah, like especially if it's trust rod adjustment. You can never find the right one. Absolutely. And that's what's so cool about this. That the, one of the things I found, because I don't have a tech, he left because I didn't pay him, but <laughs> the, um, sometimes when you're playing, you can leave your house with the guitar perfectly set up, then you're in a, a cold or hot car for hours. Mm -hmm. The venue's got no heating to speak of. Mm -hmm. And an hour before the set, you realize your neck's got a bow one way or the other. Yeah. With this, I know where to put, I can take this off, mm -hmm. put my screws here so I don't lose the darn things. Then I've got all the tools I need to actually fix my guitar. And there's a comfort zone there that has extreme value to me as a player because I've messed up on numerous occasions and played with a higher action that I wanted because I couldn't find an Allen key that I needed to fix this or change that. So all, all good stuff. Yeah. So we've just talked about this, but talk is cheap, especially from a person like myself. So as the saying goes, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So show us how you use the kit by changing your high E string, please. Let's do it. So 
The first thing I would do if it was time to change strings is actually just clean them. Right. Because I don't like changing strings. Um, so this is the Accelerate. Um, I have been using, it's nice and brand new, which I haven't seen one that looks like this in no, a long me time. Neither. Mine are all dirty. Um, so if you're like me and you don't feel the need to change a string, you know, every time it's just a little dirty. If it's time to change strings, change strings. But um, so if you're going to use the Accelerate on its own, I'm just going to spin the guitar this way so I can get to it. All you have to do really is just run it up and down the string like that. So you can kind of get a uh, feel for it a little bit. The strings were not that dirty. I just played it yesterday. And if you use it for a while, you just kind of run it along like that. So you just wipe it down like that. And that's basically what it looks like at the end. If, you know, if you've had a grimy string day, or if there's one that's more dirty, sometimes I'll go along the edge of one like that. Um, but these ones were pretty clean. You, don't really, you really don't need to. But um, give it a feel, actually, Nick. So you can see, like, it doesn't leave it too slippery. It's kind of, you know, it's got, like, a good little condition on the fretboard there. But yeah, I've still got traction. That's <laughs> the main thing. I don't lose it. It's not like the you're walking on ice. Off. I'm not flying exactly. off like an idiot. Exactly. Until I start playing. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> and then everything else that I would use to, to change a string is actually right here in the kit. I don't need anything else at all. So to change strings on a guitar like this with any double locking trem, but especially with the Ibanez trems, it's a little bit of a different process. And by the way, we were originally going to fast forward all of this. She was going to change the string, then we do the <laughs> But as she's correctly pointed out, a lot of people ask, how do I change a string on a floating trem guitar like this with locking system? So um, she's going to do it long form, and who better than a person who's got a name on a locking trem system. So take it away, Maestro. right next to a locking trem oh, yeah. system. We have one Jiva Junior here, and this is a giveaway one. So we're going to be filming all our videos today with the guitar that somebody is going to have in their hands at some point. So if you wonder why my name is on it twice, that's why. Yeah. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you're changing strings on guitars like this is unlock these little guys at the top. So you're going to grab out your Allen key, unlock here. One, two, three. It just needs a little turn. And then where do you put them? Yep. Bam. Oh. One. Right next to Nick's pocket screws. <laughs> <laughs> With the lint on, yeah. Yes. Some old socks. Um, and then, so the next thing you're going to do here, um, and you know, this is just trial and error I taught myself. I'm sure there's going to be people out there that have their own methods of doing it. But this is what works for me. I don't take all the strings off at once. I don't block the bridge. I don't do anything like that. I just change the strings in sequence, one at a time, highest to lowest. All right, so I'm going to take these two tools out, because these are the ones that I'm going to need for the next few minutes. And then I'm actually going to close up the kit and slide it under the neck. And this is going to be my makeshift workbench. Cool. You know, you have these little stands that come out, and they cradle the neck of the guitar. But I don't have one. I use this, and it works just fine. So you're going to loosen the top string. You don't have to loosen it all the way, just get so it's slack enough that when you unlock it from this end, it doesn't poke you in the right. eye, which is yep. my greatest fear. <laughs> I'm not really afraid of anything too much in life, but I don't like that idea. So what I like to do is I leave the whammy bar on, I depress the whammy bar down, and I put my thumb over this little slot here. And again, the only purpose that serves is to have it not fly out and hit me in the face. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so you take the same Allen key, the same size, and you insert it here at the bottom, give it a little turn, and the string just slides right out without hitting anybody in the face. Take it out, wind it up, put it neatly to the side. Otherwise, your cats will chew on it, like mine. And there it is. And I'm the string roadie. This is my job now. So string there roadie. you go. Bam. Back to you. So we'll take a beautiful Daddario string. And you're going to cut the ball end off here. Here you go. String roadie. Thank you. <laughs> and you're just going to slip it right here in that little valley where you've just taken the other string out of. And then just leave a little bit of tension here. Um, you can probably see it's it's got a slight bend in it. You're not going to push down so much that you actually put a crease in the string. Just enough tension that it stays all the way down to the bottom and then lock it tight right here. And I like to just do it straight like that and then at the very end just 
turn your multi-tool and just give it a little bit more of a crank so it stays in. Then, move it back down so you guys can see, you're going to thread it through here and up around the top, wind it around once, and then slip it through the hole at the top. Bam. I like to wind it around once just so it's a little bit neater looking. Do you do that? Yeah. Well, and it's going to be neater looking anyway because you're doing that. Sorry, that was awful. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then at the very top, I actually pinch it the whole time while I'm starting to finger tighten it. Um, and again, just kind of keeps it tight and neat right. looking. Um, there's nothing more kind of, I don't know, I, there's a lot of things more annoying, but there's something <laughs> annoying that you see is, you know, when you get a guitar and the strings are all like right. kind of looped over each other. Even though it's locked, so it doesn't matter, it still looks nice. It's just yeah. neater looking. So you can finger tighten it, or you can use this guy. You know, I'm not doing too, too much. So a lot of the time, we'll just, um, I'll finger tight. But if you want to use, you can do it with right. this guy as well. It's a little hard trying to do it left-handed on this, but right. <laughs> you can if you want to. So we've got the string on now. We've got it, you know, once you've got it in the right place, like about where it's supposed to be, the string should all fall back into their natural tuning. So when you take it off, don't play these other five strings, right? Yeah, they'll I mean, be out. It's, they'll be out. It's the bridge. It's nothing to stress about. If you're putting the same gauge string back on, it's going to all fall right back into place, just like these ones did. So then the next thing you're going to do is stretch your strings, because if you're using the trem like I do, you need to stretch the strings properly first, or the trem will do it for you on stage, and that's It'll go out, no yeah. good. <laughs> uh, so what I do is I take one hand here and grab the string. I take the other hand and press down firmly, and I just give it like a tweak all the way up, and then I switch hands and do the same thing all the way down. Just like a little pull. A little, little caterpillar tug. movement. Yeah, it's exactly. Um, and when I get down to the lower strings, I'll actually pick the guitar up by the string and shake it. I just don't usually do that with the high strings. Right, just because you'll break them, maybe. <laughs> so now you see you stretch it out. And you can go through it a couple times if you want. If it's if it's going to be something I'm playing, which this guitar is, I'm going to do it a few times. See, for that reason, and it happens. And the other reason, by the way, which is the obvious one, but I'll point it out because that's what I'm good at pointing out the obvious is, <laughs> is once it's locked, you're you've only got the range of this, so exactly. you need to get the stretch out of the string. And and the other thing that's very clever while she's doing that. The string tech's going to tell you the reason for doing it one string at a time is if you take them all off and it's a floating trim, the whole the spring's going to win. It's all going to go far back mm -hmm. and you lose the battle. Yes, so these one trams, at a time. It's yeah. delicate. It's a delicate little flower. You have to finesse it. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, and so if it doesn't have the right amount of tension, whether you're taking all the strings off to clean it or if you're um, if you're changing string gauges. Sticking a nine volt battery under there is not enough. <laughs> you right. have to keep const the right amount of tension on it or you're gonna have a hell of a setup ahead of you. And once once the bridge is down, then trying to get all the strings back in tune's a nightmare too, because you're all the bridge is gonna keep moving until you've got everything where it should be. So no. one at a time is the way to go, my friends. One, one at, at a time, time is the way to go. And little pro tip from me, if something I love to do is if I'm changing tunings on one of these guitars, I'll just go up a corresponding string gauge. So if I'm playing in E flat, I'll just go out to tens. Right. And I find that that pretty much keeps that balance tension. There's not a lot of adjusting to gotcha. do. So after. nines for regular tuning, E, so tens. Tens yeah. and E flat and so yeah. forth. And then it can only get so high. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, uh, so now I'll just go ahead and grab this tuner before I lock it up. I'll check it quickly. And I don't know if this is a thing. I had a tech once tell me that you should always tune a guitar in its playing position. Have you heard that? Yeah. Is this is a, this is a thing? I don't know if it makes a, a huge difference, but I always do it because I was told that's the thing. Right. Um, so you flip it on. You see, it's really nicely there. And as Nick would say, and my dad would say, close enough for rock and roll. Yep. <laughs> um, so now. We can clip this end. Here, so it's nice and tidy. Don't leave these dangling. Another String tech job, pop. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and now we'll get back into here, open it back up right where we left them. These little guys, pop them back on here. Finger tight first. 
The reason Nina took all three off is because normally we'd change the remaining five strings, the B, G, D, A, and E strings. See, I know the names, but- Backwards for the too. Yeah, I know, clever <laughs> stuff. But for the purpose of this, we're just gonna change one string. So imagine exactly. we've done the rest, we've done this five times over and now we're done. So exactly. she's finishing the job. Exactly, and before you tighten these with your Allen key, make sure you've got some room on the top and bottom of your fine tuners, because as Nick said before, once you're locked, you're locked. And yeah. this is the only little bit you have, and it's yeah. you know not even a half a step. Yeah. It's a tiny, tiny incremental amount. So you wanna tune before you get this all locked up. And then the last step here is just Crank it, not too tight, don't be crazy. It's just a little tug. You wanna be able to get these strings off someday when you need to. The string cleaner won't work forever. So just give it a little tug. And there you go, you have a nice fresh set of strings. You forgot one thing. What did I forget? You gotta put everything back where it came from. You're so right. the next time you get your kid out, <laughs> Josh will tell you, that is my downfall, is forgetting <laughs> to put things back after I use them. So yes, the last and most important step put the stuff back in your hurricane kit because mine is already missing this. It's somewhere in my house. So <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you need to do, um, I'll give you your pocket screws back. Back in the pocket they Thank go. Thank you very much. And now it's ready to be used the next time that you need it. With that said, Nina, thanks for the demonstration of not only this, but how to change strings correctly. And thank you so much for the, my free hurricane kit. <laughs> you can get it from Sweetwater, folks. Nita Strauss, thank you. Good night. I've got a kit. I'm out. See you.